CQB is dangerous. Entering a building with armed assailants who are ready and willing to kill you is one of the riskiest tasks law enforcement handles. Unlike video games, a prepared defender will have the advantage, so an attacker must carefully clear every corner. A defender only needs to watch one angle and shoot whatever appears in sight. Additionally, armed criminals typically do not care about what is beyond their target, while law enforcement must ensure that no one innocent is harmed in the execution of a warrant. Tools have been developed to try and mitigate some of this risk. From sticking guns around corners, using robots, and simply leveling the building, there have been many efforts to reduce the risk of an attacker entering a CQB environment. But one tool has been used to defend against danger for hundreds of years. The shield has been used almost as long as humans have fought each other. Blocking an attack with an object is a very simple concept, but has remained invaluable throughout human history. Law enforcement has adopted the shield for use in a variety of situations. Hostage rescues, bank robberies, and other high-risk warrants have seen the shield deployed. So why does law enforcement use shields? Can you return fire effectively with one? And how useful are they in Ready or Not? Law enforcement officers are typically wearing some kind of armor. SWAT officers and their equivalents are usually wearing ballistic helmets in addition to armor. While these are crucial and should be worn, helmet and armor coverage is limited to the top of the head and chest or torso. Arms, legs, and other areas of the body are still exposed. What a shield provides is protection for areas not covered by helmets or armor. While arms and legs are usually not considered vital organs, it still sucks getting shot in them. A shield can protect these areas from taking rounds. Sometimes, officers may be in an area where there is very little cover. A shield can provide cover when the environment offers little to none. In fact, heavier and larger shields that are not designed to be carried have been used for the purposes of providing stationary cover for officers who would be otherwise exposed. There are several factors that determine how useful a ballistic shield will be. The first is coverage. A shield must be large enough to protect the officer from fire. It must also be light enough for the shield to be maneuvered. And finally, the viewport on the shield must be wide enough for an officer to maintain as much peripheral vision as possible. Additionally, while not present on every ballistic shield, a light that is usable while on the shield is a big advantage as well. A light provides the means to see in dark areas, as well as blind someone who is potentially armed. Shields, while having a major advantage, has a number of downsides as well. The first is their size and weight. A shield needs to be large enough to do its job of stopping rounds, but this means that they can become difficult to maneuver, especially in close quarters. Shields are also heavy. Moving with a shield can become cumbersome after an extended period of time. Being mobile in a gunfight is essential. A shield trades mobility for extra protection, but carrying a heavy shield around becomes exhausting. An officer holding a shield relies on looking through the viewport to observe his or her surroundings. Even with the most well-designed viewports, some peripheral vision will be inhibited by the shield. Additionally, different types of lighting can make it very difficult to see through the viewport. Finally, Holding a shield limits the firearm an officer can use to a handgun. Aiming with pistol iron sights through a viewport is very difficult, so the preferred method is to either point shoot with a handgun in front of the shield or behind the shield. Either method limits an officer's accuracy, even with a visible laser. Not to mention, that comes with all the downsides of using a visible laser. 
using a shield with a handgun also greatly inhibits an officer's ability to reload. It can be done, but it's hard. There are also workarounds, such as carrying two handguns on both sides of the belt. So with all that said, are shields good and ready or not? Yes, especially with competent teammates. Suspects and ready or not are extremely accurate and almost always have the drop on you. A shield prevents them from instantly headshotting you and enables you to return immediate fire. With teammates who can breach doors for you and can use rifles, the shield becomes even more essential. Being able to aggressively push corners while your teammates respond with accurate gunfire behind your shield is one of the most effective strategies in CQB. The shield is very popular with law enforcement for this reason as well. Reducing the danger of entering a doorway is invaluable. And being able to protect yourself and your team makes the shield an incredibly useful tool. So next time you play Ready or Not, pick up the shield. Your teammates will love you for it. <laughs>